Hello and welcome to AM Sports with me, Mufta Nabila Abda. It will be the fourth time Ghana Black Stars will be participating in the FIFA World Cup. The team is set in world in Doha and my colleague Gar Alsmid and George Ade Jr. is updating us on the team's preparations ahead of the opening game of the competition against Portugal. Three days to the big opener for Ghana at the 2022 FIFA World Cup against Portugal. Hello and welcome to the Double Tree Hilton, which is where Ghana is based for the duration of this tournament. We are hoping, of course, that the stay here will be long and fruitful. So far, the welcome to Qatar was electric, it was big. All across here a couple of days ago, there were so many fans waiting. Now things have calmed down a bit. They were given an off day as Otuado accounted for jet lag and for them to rest a bit. But they are back on the pitch today to go through their paces. In terms of team news, there's not, nothing much to report. Up, the players are in good shape, we understand. Um, Andre, are you the captain? You know, we understand that. He'll be going through special training just so that he can get himself up to speed also. It's also a Portugal watch because we understand Cristiano Ronaldo may not start for Portugal. There's so much news going on around that. We don't know what it means for the Black Stars. What it means, though, is that Otoado has to plot for various situations. And speaking of Otoado, his administration has been marked by predictable unpredictability because we've never been able to really say what starting 11 he will be putting out for most of his games. Let me bring in my colleague, George Ado Jr., who is here with me. Uh, you've been hearing us on radio also together. George, this is the team hotel. Yeah, it's looking good. And the first thing I, I mean, easily noticeable for anyone is the number of security men here, or the, the security detail is absolutely tight. I think probably close to maybe 200 security uh, guys here who are ensuring that the team is safe and also uh, trying as much as possible to prevent unwanted visitors, which is a key thing. It's, it's sometimes been a feature for some of the African teams where they are distracted a bit because of the number of people entering a hotel. It's not likely to be happening this time around. Uh, picking a bit of good news because we know that government had indicated they were not going to fund supporters to Doha, but they had opened the window for corporate Ghana. It appears corporate Ghana has been able to raise an amount of money and that would be good enough to send some supporters to show up what we've got. When the team arrived here, the streets were full of Ghanaian supporters here in Doha. They were really, really looking out for uh, the Black Stars, waiting to welcome them. And the numbers were great. So there was a community meeting between the Ghana Football Association and the Ghanaians in this community to establish how many supporters they had. They said they had close to 2,000. Good news is that before we play against Portugal, there will be another set coming from Ghana to show up the numbers to probably 3,200 thereabout. And so we'll have some Ghanaian supporters in the stands supporting the Black Stars. That is really, really good. Talk about to the players. We've seen them. They're looking sharp. They're hoping uh, that they can find a way somehow uh, to get a win or, you know, get an important point against Portugal. And Gary, really, uh, the competition started on a very good note with that opening ceremony. Um, I don't want to say any more words about the opening game. It's all fine. I hope we'll get better as we go. Coverage of the World Cup continues on Joy Prime. You can watch the games there. Um, the African challenge begins with Senegal playing the Netherlands. We are hoping that there'll be more Africans going into, for example, the round of 16 and so on. So for now, that's the update from the Team Ghana camp. I'm Gary Al Smith here with George Ado Jr. reporting from Doha. We will have loads of these as we build up to Ghana's opening game against Portugal and even more because we'll also be switching our lenses to the other African countries that are participating in the tournament. It was not a good start for African representatives in the FIFA World Cup because yesterday African champions Senegal suffered a 2 0 loss. We'll be bringing you the highlights of that game. But before that, Let's hear from a management committee member of the Black Stars, a former defender of the senior national team, 
Samuel Oseko for who's been speaking about the chances of the Black Stars when they come up against Portugal. According to him, the focus on Cristiano Ronaldo should be a non-starter because he's not the only star man in the setup of Portugal. He wants the technical team and every single Ghanaian to look at the Portugal team in a holistic format and not just the star man, Cristiano Ronaldo. I think we, have, we need to control our game and play to our best of our ability. We shouldn't think about the Ronaldo alone. No. They have uh, some quite great players. So, uh, Felix, uh, Fernandez, they, Juan Moutinho, they are all good. Mm. So we should, the focus shouldn't be on Ronaldo. It should be around the team. How we also approach the game. Yeah. That's the most important thing for me because if you say Ronaldo, then all the focus will go on Ronaldo, you leave the other ones and it doesn't work for the team like that. It has to be a collective, it has to be a teamwork, it has to be concentration throughout the 90 minutes. It's a different approach from our te uh, technical team because now things have changed. Even my playing days uh, to now, uh, to, uh, to today, a lot of things have changed in the mm. training session. Yeah. So you could see that our technical men are doing everything possible and I, was, I am with them every day. They are not sleeping. Yeah. They are just go to details by details. The same thing we did against Nigeria. So I believe it's going to be a, a, a shock for people because, like I said, we got nothing to lose to play against one of the best in the world. And we have to approach our game the way we want it. We'll bring you the highlights of England versus Iran and uh, that of USA versus Wales shortly. But our pundit for our coverage of the FIFA World Cup, Christopher Nimli, provided a breakdown of how Senegal suffered a defeat against the Netherlands. There are four players or five players that I want to highlight. First of all, Mendy, and then Koulibaly and his defensive partner, mm. and then the left back. Of Senegal they had a clear view of what was going to happen now when I move this on a bit and I paused it here when the ball got to Frankie de Jong you could clearly see the movement of Gakpo Gakpo at this stage we say he's on the blind side he's on the blind side of Koulibaly there you go okay there you go there you go Okay, I'm not yeah, getting my icons sure, sure. on board. But Gakpo on, on this side, pause it here. He was on the... If only we could take it back a bit. Let's take it back a bit. Let's take it back a bit. So that I will, I will, I will show some few things. Very well, sure. Okay, so you clearly see that this is already gone. But I wanted to highlight the starting position of Mendy. The fact that this is... Look, look at the space in front of Mendy. Clearly, his starting position was wrong because he could clearly see what was going to happen. Frankie de Jong's ball was going to be what? An in-swinger. And once it is an in-swinger, it is heading towards goal. So the starting position of Mendy here was very, very important. So he should have taken at least one or two steps and he's starting on the six-year line. He didn't do that. Mistake number one. Mistake number two came from the left back. Came from the left back of Senegal. Because already, like I said earlier on, um, Gakpo is on the blind side of Koulibaly and his defensive partner so they couldn't see him they had their eyes on the ball so it meant that the only Senegalese defender who could have at least helped curtail the situation or give that was some form of competition was the left back and he went completely to sleep somebody had two dutch players to deal with but in tactics you tell you that the one behind you is away from goal so in terms of danger he poses the lesser danger. And Gapo, who was the one in front of you, closer to go, is the one going to pose the most, or the most, um, the most danger. So he should have focused on Gapo and not the player behind him. Now, when, if you roll this up, if you could play it again, yeah, there you go. It. Now look at Mendy. He clearly saw that his three defenders were all completely out of the picture. So he needed to come and save the situation. But because, again, like I said earlier on, his starting position was so bad, he couldn't get there in time. And they considered from a very sloppy word, way of defending. Mm. At this level, you don't defend like this. At this level, when you defend like this, 99% out of 100, you are punished. You are punished indeed. And we're talking about the technique that uh, Kori Gako used to outwit, uh, you know, goalkeeper Mendy. 
I mean, this is a ball. I mean, we saw similar situations. Yes, We've seen similar situations yes, in the last 24 hours. Exactly. And you could clearly see that uh, players went into the air, but unfortunately were not able to get their heads uh, technically the way they should to get the ball in the kind of direction that they were. Exactly. Looking. You see, the ball itself, like I said earlier, was an in-swinger. And mm. once it is that, you don't need to apply any form of force. Mm. Not too much of the force will actually solve your problem. All he needed to do was to flick it. And if you look at him, he did two things right. In flicking the ball, he also dodged Mendy's punch because Mendy could have just gone into him like that. Yeah, that would have true. brought some form of concussion, mm. which we all don't want, isn't it? So he did the smartest of things was to get to the ball first, flick the ball, and then quickly went off the Mendy's punch. And you need to be of a certain quality to be able to exhibit these three things within a split of a second. Christopher Nemleder, you would, would always want to join him on our coverage of the FIFA World Cup on Joy Prime as he, Maxwell Conadu, David Akam and Jonathan Mensah brings you some unrivaled perspective into the actions that will be happening in the FIFA World Cup. Tonight, we're bringing you France versus Australia. Build-up starts at 6 p.m. and kick-off at 7 p.m. We're